We continue our journey around the vineyards of Occitanie and now we have arrived in the Roussillon. This is the southernmost appellation in France. In fact, it's only been part of France for the last 350 years when the Treaty of the Pyrenees was signed in 1659. Côte de Roussillon is the largest appellation in the region. It covers the entire département of the Pyrénées Orientales, with the exception of the southeast corner of Collioure and Bagnols. Here the climate is hot, with nearly 3,000 hours of sunshine a year, and rainfall is low, about 500 millimetres, which is barely enough for the vines to survive without irrigation. The wind here is also very strong, with the Tramontane blowing from the northwest for at least 150 days a year. It's also common to get winds blowing off the Mediterranean and even some coming from the Pyrenees itself, like a wind called the Canigounac. All around, you're surrounded by mountains. To the north, you have the Corbière. To the west, you have the Canigou, the highest peak in the Pyrenees at nearly 3,000 meters. And to the south, you have the Albert, which is basically an extension of the Pyrenees. And then to the east, you have the Mediterranean. So the whole region is enclosed by topographical features. As a result, the landscape is not really flat. Here we have slopes, we have undulations, we have different orientations, and we also have a myriad of soil types you know, created by the Pyrenees themselves when they were formed 150 million years ago. So here in the Côte de Roussillon, you will find everything from clay, limestone, granite, schist, gneiss, galliroule, even some red soils, all mixed in together in one appellation. The main grape variety here is Grenache for the red wines. And this is complemented by Syrah, Carignan, Mourvedre as the main varieties for the red wines. These account for about 40% of the total production. Another variety, Grenache Gris, uh, is also found here and that actually is used mostly for making rosé, which forms the bulk of the production here in the Côte de Roussillon with about 55% of the production. Perhaps most interesting of all are the white wines, which only account for about 5% of the production, and made from varieties such as Grenache Blanc, Grenache Gris, Maccabeo, and the Tourba, which is also known as Malvoisie. It's somewhat paradoxical, because here we have such a hot region, yet the white wines can have an elegance and a delicacy and surprising levels of acidity. It seems somewhat almost controversial that a region so warm can produce white wines with such delicacy and finesse. But overall, this is a region for producing all styles of wine, everything from entry point up to age-worthy examples. And the landscape is truly breathtaking. Now we come to the tasting. And the wine we're going to try is a white wine from the region. Uh, I know this is only 5% of the total production of Côte de Roussillon, but I wanted to put this wine in to show that this hot climate is capable of producing some really excellent white wines. The wine in question is Les Glaciers from Domaine Gardiès. This is an organic estate located in the village of Vingros in the northern part of the region, very close to the Corbière. And like the Corbière, the soil here is more clay limestone. This is a wine that is a blend of Grenache Blanc, Grenache Gris, Roussin and Maccabeo. Uh, so we have four varieties in this wine. And straight away on the nose, this combination of four different varieties has given you, you know, quite a sort of panoply of aromas. So we've got everything from some nice lemon, citrus characters, some honeysuckle, some peach. Uh, almost like that marmalade citrus peel character as well. Oak is very much in the background. In fact, it's hardly noticeable at all. This wine does actually have eight months in oak but in the large demi mui so 500 litre uh, oak barrels. The first thing you notice about the wine is the ripeness. I mean, the fruit here is at optimum ripeness and there's an opulence and a richness of the fruit that comes out straight away. There's also an intensity of the fruit. You can feel it carpeting the palate due mainly to the low yields. I mean, this is barely at 30 hectolitres per hectare, so we're getting quite a lot of intensity and concentration. This is all underpinned by a surprising amount of acidity. As I mentioned earlier, this is a hot region, but here in the northern part, we have altitude. We've got some cooling breezes, particularly the Tramontans blowing, and that's giving this real elegance and finesse to what would normally be a quite sort of heavy and rich and very typical, a lot of white wines from the Côte de Roussillon. It shows that paradox perfectly, you know, how you get this elegance and finesse in such a hot region. 
Continuing our journey in the Roussillon, we come to the Appalachia of Côte de Roussillon village. This is in the northern part of the département of the Pyrénées Orientales, with the Courbière hills bordering us to the north and the Tet River forming the border in the south. There's one satellite Appalachian which is now part of the Côte de Roussillon village, Les Aspes, a little bit to the southwest in the foothills of the Canigou mountain. This is a hot climate. Sunshine hours really between 2,800 and 3,000 a year, and it's very dry. You know, 450 millimeters of rain a year on average, sometimes less. So this is a difficult climate. However, the flip side is it's capable of producing some of the best red wines in the Roussillon. The main grape variety here is Grenache, complemented by Syrah, Mourvedre, and Carignan mainly. And the vines barely reach above knee height. So tough is the climate with the very hot sunshine, very arid, very dry, and the strong tramontane wind which blows very frequently. And with no irrigation, the vines literally do struggle. It's common to see maybe two or three bunches maximum per vine. So yields naturally are very low, between 20 and 30 hectoliters, sometimes even less than that. But as I said before, this is the region for producing some of the best Grenache. Many producers look over the border into Priorat in the south and see what they have done with this variety. And the Côte de Roussillon village is capable of producing similar quality wines in the south of France. This is an area that historically made Vin du Naturel, fortified sweet wines, and Maury itself is located within the Côte de Roussillon village. But with the decline of these styles, many producers turned to making dry reds, and they found that a combination of old, low-yielding vines was excellent for producing such high-quality dry red wines. There are also five denominations that can be added to Côte de Roussillon village, and these are based on villages in the northern part of the region, such as La Tour de France, Caramani, Lesquet, and Tortevel, and as I mentioned before, since 2016, Les, Les Asp in the southwest. These are based on different aspects, microclimate, soil type predominantly, maybe even altitude, and they can be added to the Côte de Roussillon village appellation. So this is an appellation that's gone through an enormous change, the move from fortified wines through to dry wines, but the landscape is absolutely breathtaking and the wines can be a real revelation. Now we come to the tasting and the wine we're going to try is from Domaine Modar. It's actually a cuvee that's called Le Plus Joli, but in this year, in 2011, because it was such a fantastic vintage, they renamed it La Plus Jolie. So you can see on the label, it looks like they've written on it in Biro, but that's because of the vintage itself in 2011. This is a property that's located in the village of Caramani, which is in the southwest part of Côte de Roussillon village, and gives its name to the denomination, so you can actually put Côte de Roussillon village Caramani on the label. It's a separate appellation. It uses the same grape varieties that we've seen in Côte de Roussillon village, Grenache mainly, Carignan and some Syrah, and we have some very, very old vines in this wine. The Carignan in particular goes back to 1905, so 115 years old. And the soil type here in Caramani is very different from other parts of the Côte de Roussillon village. We have a soil that's called Nice, that's spelled G-N-E-I-S-S. This is a very ancient soil. It's like a sandy form of granite. It looks like a beach. In fact, when you walk on it, it's like being on a beach. You leave literally footprints in the soil itself. It is quite possible that this old Carignan is ungrafted, i.e. not on a rootstock, because in this sandy form of soil, it's very difficult for the phylloxera to survive. Well, that nose is explosive. You know. We've got more dried fruits rather than fresh fruits, like dried cranberry, dried raspberry. It's really spicy. So this beautiful, lovely pepper and licorice, almost slightly sweet spice, cinnamon coming through as well. We've got some leather, we've got some even some truffle, a touch of oak, but really the most complex aromas are coming from the grape varieties and the blend itself. In a sense, this is a big wine. You know, it's rich, it's full-bodied, there's plenty of alcohol in here. There's up to 15% alcohol in this wine. Yet on the other hand, it's got some restraint, it's got some elegance. 
there's an amazing backbone of acidity. Quite surprising maybe for a Appalachian so far south. But here in Karamani, this altitude, the proximity to the Pyrenees, and the incessant winds, the Tramontane that blows all the time, are giving an element of freshness to this wine, which is really making it really very drinkable and very approachable. The tannins are still quite firm, and there's still a long way to go. This wine may be nine years old, but it's got the ability to improve at least another five or six years and keep another 10 to 15 years beyond that. This is really an outstanding example of a wine from the Côte de Roussillon village. Cheers.